The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Let's continue it like this. Of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in that loki, he was working on, on people, <coughs> gradually trying to convey his message and, um, and, and ask them to keep quiet. Um, during these three years. <coughs> Until he received the orders, وَأَنْذَرْ عَشَرَتْكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn your close relatives. And the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> um, invited uh, some 40 of his tribesmen of Bani Hashim. And among them were Abu Lahab, who is one of his uncles, and Abu Talib, of course, and um, various others, all from Bani Hashim. And he asked Imam Ali السلام, to prepare food for them. Remember that Imam Ali was, if you like, um, 10 years old. He did that. It, it brings into question that what's going on. And um, they served food for the people, when they ate and finished, the uh, Prophet وآله, he said, I want to talk to you about some, something important. And um, in summary, he said to them that I am, uh, as you can see, that I am, uh, uh, I have religion of Islam and I'm messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, I want you to believe in me and um, uh, Allah has instructed me to go public, therefore I've called upon you to begin with. And um, I invite you to believe in Allah, in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, I am his messenger. <coughs> and whoever supports me in this uh, matter, <coughs> he will be my brother and my wasi my executioner, the executioner of my will, and also my successor, my Khalifa. <coughs> and the people just looked, looked on. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was waiting for them to answer. When there was no response from the mass, from the people uh, sitting in, the, in that meeting, Imam Ali السلام, at that time, barely teen, a teenager, 13 years old, <coughs> Um, he got up and says, I will support you. And the oh. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, okay, sit down. And he gave them time to reflect, and then he asked them again. He said, whoever supports me in this, in this matter, he will be my, um, my brother, my wasi, and my, khal my khalifa, my ex uh, successor. Um, uh, in the, for this nation. And no one responded. He gave them time, and then Imam Ali Ali Salam stood up and said, I will support you. And um, for the third time, the Prophet said the same thing. And nobody responded. Imam Ali Ali Salam stood up and said, I will support. And he, the Prophet took his hand and he said, He is my brother, he is my executioner, and he is my successor uh, amongst you, uh, after me, as far as this religion is concerned. And فَأَسْمَعُ لَهُ وَأَطِيعُ So you should 
now that he is my successor, <coughs> or he will be my successor, you should um, um, listen to him and obey him. And of course, they found it funny. And um, those, some of those who were, um, um, if you like, op opposing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, um, they turned to, um, amongst them was Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet. They turned to Abu Talib, uh, ridiculing him and saying that from now on, you should obey, you should listen to and mm -hmm. obey your 13-year-old son. Yeah, try to be smart, Abu Lahab. You know. Um, so this was, this was um, how it went public. Okay. In the uh, beginning. In, in the beginning. So it was. So he waited for three years and it received instruction from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he did that. Mm -hmm. uh, to begin, to begin with, he started with his mm -hmm. uh, his tribe, Bani Hashim. What what uh, what you mentioned and is is quite astonishing is how early. In the beginning of Islam, before actually even Islam was was known to the people, was declared from 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 the get go. You see, Amir al-Mu'minin salam proving firstly to his family that he is the he is going to be the successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Where you mentioned that um, the Holy Prophet said, "Whoever will support me will be my successor." Yeah. Um, and Subhanallah, even though. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, young in age, as you said, 12, 13 years old, he stood up not once, not twice, but thrice mm -hmm. to emphasize it. And it's beautiful how uh, we, we know that uh, when, I don't know if it was Arabian culture, but we see that if, if they wanted to emphasize or stress the importance of something, they would either repeat it three times or redo it three times. And we see it here with Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam standing up three times and the Holy Prophet him, sit down, okay? Meaning that, okay, we, we, me and you, we know, yeah, they know now, they'll get it. And we see Abu Lahab's response to Abu Talib, of course. What else can you expect from a man like Abu Lahab? Um, and now, once the meeting was done, the family knew. Obviously, they would have started to spread the word amongst the Quraysh, correct? Uh, for yeah. example, Abu Lahab, for example. He probably ran to his friends and guess what? Uh, Muhammad وسلم, said this last night, for example. What, what, was, what, what occurred next? What was, what was the, the, um, the, the, the Holy Prophet وسلم, strategy? What was the game plan? So he's, he's now informed the family not very good, strong response from the family. What was the next step? Um, before, before going to the next step, I would like to, if you like, mm. emphasize on this. Um, you might want to see, uh, you, people might say, why was it so important uh, to mention right at the outset who my successor is going to be? Yes. Okay. Basically, it goes to show the significance, the two things, it goes to show the significance of uh, um, the, uh, the successorship, if mm. you like, the Khilafah of the, uh, the Prophet So we have the Prophet and the importance, okay, as long as he stays alive, then he will steer this religion and, and the people. Um, okay, what happens after him? Uh, Right from the word go, the Prophet on instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is also talking about thinking and talking about that stage, what happens next. And he, he also talks, and therefore he talks about the fact that after me, from right from now, after me is going to be X, Y, Z. And of course, the X, Y, Z, at that stage he mentioned Ali alayhi salam. Because succession or Khilafah is as important as the Prophethood itself. Um, it's nothing less because, yes, Prophethood receives a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but uh, you need the rightful Khilafah um, as appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they could continue this message. Uh, uh, they will be of the same caliber, if you like, Asma and so on, which you mentioned earlier. They will be of the same caliber as the Prophet They are not prophets. The Khulafa or the successors uh, are not prophets. That were which uh, the, the Prophet appointed twelve of them, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned them on numerous occasions throughout his life. Um, 
They're not prophets. They don't receive re revelation from uh, Allah, new revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they, they are the, the, the only people who can continue this message. Okay. They share okay. the status of prophethood, but they don't have uh, what comes with prophethood, if, if that's correct to say. For example, the attributes, the the etiquette of prophethood. Yeah, they have the, uh, if you like, attributes of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, mm. but they're not prophet. Listen yes. to you. Um, um, and in fact, um, going back slightly, when Imam Ali alayhi salam is, is, is saying in this khutbah, which I read, khutbah number 192, um, it says that at that time, at that time, there was only one house which had Islam. One household which had Islam. And that was um, uh, Rasulullah wa Khadija wa Anna Thalithuma. I am Rasulullah Khadija and I, as Imam Ali alayhi salam, I am the third. MashaAllah. And now this went on for, for obviously, for, if you like, for three years. Um, Imam Ali says, Ana uh, Ara Nur al Wahi wa Rasal. I see the light and the brightness of revelation and the message. I breathe the aroma of prophethood. So the Prophet Imam Ali was with the Prophet all along. On other occasions he says um, he used to go to the to the cave to the cave with him, where I could see him and no one else could see him. Um, and um, in fact, in the same khutbah, um, Imam Ali says that from young age, the Prophet ﷺ started taking care of me. And uh, uh, he was obviously, again, very young. The food must have been hard or the bread was hard. It says that the Prophet ﷺ used to chew the food and then give it to me. Um, he was ta the Prophet was taking care of him and, of course, the, the angel was along with the Prophet, as I said, it was day and night, <coughs> day and night with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And um, he used to teach the Prophet, if you like, um, akhlaq. And Imam Ali says that every day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used to show me one of the teachings, uh, set up one of the teachings for me, and he used to command me to, to follow that, to practice that. And um, he was basically trained by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi, and every all the teachings that he had, he like transferred to the Prophet, to Imam Ali alaihi salam, um, which made him, which made him uh, uh, um, to uh, receive uh, to have the qualification to succeed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi. Um, th These are the, the important thing. That's why. The Prophet wanted to make sure um, to say that Khilafah is important and it must succeed, it must continue. And it isn't just anyone can continue the message of, of, of Rasulullah sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And from day one he appointed Imam Ali alayhi salam being the uh, Khalifa. And also the second important is wanted to stress that Ali is the one. So over the course of 23 years, the Prophet sallallahu made it clear continuously throughout the time that Ali is my successor. Mm. And this is the second point. Ma made it clear not uh, to the people, to the masses. Not only he made it clear that Khilafah is important as far as the prophet is con uh, prophethood is concerned, he also wanted to make it clear to the people who are going to be the people in charge, who is going to be the individual who is going to be the Khalifa, if you like. Uh, the leader after the Prophet sallallahu for mankind uh, to, to steer this religion and steer the people. Uh, from the word go, Imam, the Prophet sallallahu said it's Imam Ali alayhi salam. This is something which is very important. With regards to um, the Prophet's mission, what was his mission in the beginning? So in those three, three years that what was, what was he preparing before announcing it to the public? Um, were there any preparations that took place? Were ayahs of the Holy Quran being revealed throughout those three years? Did they start after the announcement to the public? 
Yes, as they the, the verses of the Quran were being revealed, he would he would um, <coughs> recite these verses to the people, the handful of people who were around mm -hmm. him. Um, we have reported that the fourth person who uh, um, became, if you like, on the on the surface of it, it became uh, uh, a believer in the message of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa After the fourth person, that is, in, as I said, in that a household of three, the Prophet, his wife Khadija and Imam Ali, was uh, Ja'far al-Tayyar, the brother of Imam Ali. It's reported that Abu Talib alayhi salam um, said to his son Ja'far, go and join them in mm -hmm. prayers. So he did the ablution of the wudu and he joined them. So obviously he received it. So he became, if like, the fourth one to, mm -hmm. to follow. So we have such, such reports. So basically, he, of course, I want to say that as we mentioned uh, some time ago, uh, Abdul Muttalib was, it is reported that Abdul Muttalib was Hujjah and his wasi was Abu Talib, alayhim as um, But Abu Talib, in order to, he, who, because he was acting as a mediator as far as the Prophet was concerned, of course, he had his status of the chief of Quraysh after mm -hmm. Abu Talib. Um, and he was highly respected. Bani Hash, sorry, chief of Bani Hashim, I should have said, not Quraysh. Um, Bani Hashim <coughs> themselves were respected, and Abu Talib, after the after Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib was highly respected by all of Quraysh. Uh, so he had his status, he had his social status, if you like. Um, and um, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, and he knew that his nephew Muhammad will be the the Prophet. Um, and when he announced his prophethood uh, and he announced his message, he wanted to play the role of mediator between Quraysh and uh, the Prophet So it was important that he, if you like, he doesn't um, look like, okay, I'm a devout follower of Muhammad to begin with, so that he can, uh, they have a, if you like, communication channel with, with he, can, he can have a communication channel with Quraysh. Um, um, so he orders, if you like, uh, his son Jafar to go and um, join them, and more and more people came and joined in as the spread, as the message spread. And uh, uh, when they hear the message, those who were worshiping, uh, worshiping idols and whatever, they came forth. They abandoned that religion, paganism or whatever, and they became Muslim and followed the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad was known for his manners. He continued of, over like 20 years, he continued the same manner. Um, he was, uh, and now he's got this message. So basically he was gathering more and more people um, until he received the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should go public, which he went with, with his close relatives. SubhanAllah. Now as to regards to the tactics and the methods he, he deployed during that period, mm -hmm. Um, can you please clarify to me? Yeah. So after he went public, um, Quraysh took notice. They realized that this guy is not um, one of those many who came and claimed something mm. and vanished, vanished. you know, late after a while. Um, in fact, for example, Waraka, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Waraka bin Nofel, he used to preach um, uh, Christianity, okay, and um, in Mecca. In Mecca, was he <laughs> Quraysh or he came from? Uh, no, he's Quraysh. He's he's Quraysh. the cousin of Sayyid Khad Khadija. <coughs> yes, of course. Okay, and in fact, I read somewhere that um, um, before that. <coughs> um, Others were preaching various religions, whether Christianity or others, and so on. Quraysh didn't. Uh, now, when it came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to begin, um, to begin with, he uh, he started saying when he went public, he started saying these ash, um, idol worshiping is false. Th these are stones. You shouldn't be doing this. You should worship Allah, the one who created everything. Mm. These idols. Um, they don't hear, they don't speak, they don't have any benefit for you, they, don't, they can't do any harm to you. 
So why are you doing this? This Quraysh didn't like. Because basically he's undermining their base. More and more people are sort of joining him and going away from idol worship. And, uh, Mostly they didn't like it because it hurt their pockets, not anything <laughs> else. If you like. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and of course their status. Uh, mm. And they came to Abu Talib. They have a lot of respect for Abu Talib. He, Abu Talib was no ordinary person. Mm. Highly respected. The chief of clan of Bani Hashim. But outside the clan, outside Bani Hashim, he was highly respected. They came to him and said, look, he's ridiculing our gods. He's uh, uh, and uh, ridiculing our ideas and beliefs. Mm. You have to stop him. He said, okay, I'll speak to him. He spoke to him. And nothing happened. He continued. They came back to him. They said to him, look, you either deal with him or you go away. Okay, you move aside. Away as, in move, as in move aside. Stop protecting him. Basically. Stop protecting him so that we can deal with him mm. and stop him. He said, let me speak to him again. And he went and speak, uh, he, he, he spoke to the Prophet sallallahu and of course, the Prophet Sallallahu said his, the well, well-known um, uh, statement that if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to stop, in order to stop this mission, I will not and I'll continue this until either Allah will uh, make, it, uh, uh, um, make this revelation widespread so that everyone accepts it and it becomes a prominent religion, or I die. Mm. I'm not going to give up no matter what. Um, and um, they realize that he's very serious about this. They tried to bribe uh, Abu Talib uh, in order to, so that he doesn't protect him, so that they can deal with, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Of course, remember, um, other than Abu Jahl, uh, sorry, Abu, Abu Lahab uh, and two other individuals from Bani Hashim, uh, all of Bani Hashim were with, with this uh, young man, Muhammad. Okay. They either believed in him or out of... Um, respect. Uh, out of respect and honor in the sense that he is our, uh, one of member of our tribe and it's our duty because of kinship. We have to protect him. So there may be people who didn't believe in the religion of Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. uh, وآله, but they believed in protecting him out of um, the fact that they are both in the same tribe, in the same clan. So he had Bani Hashim behind him. He had Abu Talib, who was the chief of Bani Hashim at the time, highly respect, uh, respectful individual. Um, it didn't work. Then they came to the Prophet, uh, and they came to Abu Talib to say this. They said, look, if he wants money, we will gather money so that we will, we will make him the richest in Mecca, richer than ourselves. And if he wants status, they said, he, they said something which is very surprising. Um, they said that we will make him our master. The king of Quraysh. The king of Quraysh. But they use the phrase, which people say king of Quraysh. Mm. But I think if one is careful, probably it's got another meaning, which is even more subtle. They said, نُمَلِّكُهُ عَلَيْنَا نُمَلِّكُهُ means we make him uh, that he owns us. Basically, that means that we become his slaves. نُمَلِّكُهُ عَلَيْنَا so we submit, we become his slaves, just we want him to stop this. Uh, uh, they knew this, this man, he was a gentleman, he was very kind, he was very well mannered, he was very truthful, loyal. He had all the attributes, all the virtues mm -hmm. and the merits that they could think of, he had them. So they wouldn't be afraid, as you said, that if they, for, for the sake of him stopping spreading the message to give him all the power, they knew that he would not abuse it. Mm. 
That's why they were very. so confident they to give him the confident. money and the, lo and the position to govern them mm. because they knew and were confident they, that he would never abuse the power mm. and they would not be in trouble. Basically, the Prophet he didn't want confrontation from uh, with Quraysh. He continued with his message of non-violence, if you like, and uh, he absorbed all the violence that uh, they they showed him, and uh, he wanted to convey his message to the people. Mm.